Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. Hey, welcome into my office right here where we make all the videos, where we do put all the behind the scenes work in on all these things. Hey, today we're going to do a special episode of the Guides Network. You know, back in the pre-spawn time, we did a video on how to find spots on a new lake that you've never been to, showed you guys some of the computer technology that I use to scout out a new lake when I'm going there. Well, we're going to do a similar thing today. That video got great response, so we're going to do that again. We're going to do it for summertime spots, and we're going to go to Cedar Creek Lake, a lake that I've never fished. So y'all stay tuned. All right, so the first thing that you need to know is the web apps that I use. This is the Navionics web app right here. It's absolutely free. You can pull it up on any laptop, iPhone, whatever you want to. Uh, and the other one is Google Earth, which is also another free. So this cost me zero doll hairs, you might say, to use these uh, web apps to, to research new lakes. Um, so these are the two devices I'm gonna use. I've got Cedar Creek pulled up on both of them. You know, in the summertime uh, on Cedar Creek, you know, if I can, guys, anytime I'm in the summertime, if I can find offshore structure, uh, I'd almost rather do that unless I just know the lake has got a lot of grass in it. I do know that Cedar Creek is not just chock full of grass. So my main focus is, is going to be the offshore structure on Cedar Creek. All right, so first thing is we need to get zoomed in. And anytime I'm looking for offshore structure, I'm going to tend to start down by the dam end of the lake. It's going to have the deeper water down by the dam. And so we're going to start looking for structure. And, and, you know, in the summertime, you know, right off the bat here, I see a couple things. There's a big, long, flat point area out here that's got some interesting contours to it. And then there's a shorter one over here. One of the big things in the summertime, guys, is going to be the, the smaller, uh, smaller plateaus, smaller tabletops with steeper drops on either side. And this one right here looks to kind of maybe fit that bill a little better than this big long point. I would be willing to bet that in May and June, this big long point up here is gonna be really good. But right now, I'm gonna focus my attention on this one here. So I wanna get zoomed in real close where I can see all the contours and wow, look at the contours on this topping out in 10 foot of water right there. Hopefully that stands out where you guys can see that 10 foot marking. Uh, but 10 foot of water right there, which is just kind of ideal for summertime fishing. Um, so I'm really, I'm liking the looks of this. Even has, looks like we've got a road bed. There's an old submerged culvert here. So we got a road bed running down the side of this thing. Drops off into 40, 45, and got 10 foot on top. That is A number one, just proto, I mean, prototypical. Of, well, that's exactly what you look for in the summertime. Small table on top, steep drop on the edge, um, you know, that's going to get hit, you know, it's pretty open to the dam. And so there's going to be wind on this most days, which wind is your friend in the summertime as well. So that's something to think about when you're looking at offshore structure. This looks really, really good. So within just a couple minutes, I found a spot that I'm really excited to fish already. Uh, you know, Google Earth isn't going to come into play so much on these type of spots. We'll, we'll zoom in on that and see what Google Earth has to say. So not much here, but there is one thing here that you need to take note of. There's a point of reference. We're down here in the corner of the dam. We know that this spot is out in front of this little knoll or whatever you want to call that sticking out. So that's going to be a, oop, that's going to be a good point of reference when you're, when you're looking and when you get to the lake. So this is why I always use both, right? So I check it on both. Even though I can't see any of those contours that are out here on Google Earth, what Google Earth shows me is that there's a landmark here so I know where to start looking for this right out in front plus I'll have my contour lines on my boat as well so right there you go okay so I just noticed something else here too as we're looking at this 
right beside it, there's another nine, 10 foot peak on a hump out here. So let's go see what that says. All right, nine foot, another hump on top. I'm not as, you know, excited about this one because this one has such steep contour lines on it. That's what really, I think, you know, that's what I really look for in the, in the summertime is that steep contour lines. But I like the looks of this too. It's got this other road running out, this other part of the road bed running out to it. And, and nine, 10 foot on top, another hump with some fairly steep contour lines, 42 foot, fairly close right there. Hey, I'm gonna check that as well. I think this is gonna be A and this is gonna be B, but you know, I like both of them. All right, so I kind of have located that. So now I'm just gonna kind of scroll along looking for anything else that looks similar uh, on the map from this distance here. Cause I can go through the whole lake pretty quick as you can see on this, as far as how far zoomed out I am. As I look up in this creek, there might be something I'm overlooking, but I don't see anything that just stands out, you know, right off the bat in either one of these big creek arms. So I'm gonna go up the main lake here. Uh, that could be interesting, not really what I'm looking for. Oh, here's one. So here's a point, it looks like it's got a hump on the end of a point, or, or just a little narrow, sharp plateau on the end of a point, uh, main channel going right in front of it. That's gonna be awesome, probably. So let's go look at that. Oh, and look here, somebody even marked a little fish symbol on the Navionics web app. So as you can see, this one right here has another road bed going across it. We've got the main, uh, creek channel looks like right out here in front of it and on, on this side and then the other one joins in on this side so you got creek channels all the way around it uh, you got a road bed going across it tops out in 13 14 feet this is another a type of spot I mean this is prototypical of what you want in the summertime small top sharp drop uh, deep water features close by that is what you're looking for in the summertime so let's keep going up the lake I see something of interest already right here Boy, I tell you, Old Cedar Creek has got uh, got some good features in it for offshore structure. This is this is what I like. I'm finding a lot of offshore structure stuff really easy to find, really obvious stuff, uh, which tells me this lake's going to have a lot of these type of features. So I've got a hump kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. I've got creeks running on two sides of it, uh, and, and it tops out in 17 foot in a couple of spots right here and right here. Um, I'm going to look towards the creek bend side of this hump. So I'm gonna look at the tops of the humps, the peaks right here and right here, and then I'm gonna check these slopes on these sides all through here, because that's the creek channel side. Uh, you know, when you've got that southwest wind, that best wind blowing, that's the side that's gonna be getting the wind on it. So I'm liking the looks of this, and I'm probably not gonna pay as much attention to all this over here as I am over here. This is also the steeper side right in here, which makes sense because that's the side that the creek, creek channel runs on. So I continue up here, let's see if we can find anything else. Oh, there's one right here, y'all. You could probably already see it. There's a hump sticking out right there. Now what I would do, guys, at this point, if I was wanting to go fish this lake tomorrow, you know, these, uh, what, three, four spots that we've already found, I would be having this in my boat and marking waypoints on my boat uh, electronics unit uh, to correlate to these spots so I can find them easy the next, you know, tomorrow when I go out to the lake. Here's another really good looking hump. I mean, this thing's got some sharp sides on it. It comes up really tall all the way to looks like six foot on top. Man, that looks phenomenal. It's got good water depth around it, 20 plus foot of water around it. The one thing that I don't particularly like about this hump over the others is there is no creek channel roadbed. There's no other features that are running really close. Looks like there might be a creek right here. So I'd check that out. But because this is such a dynamic feature going from 20, 25 foot up to six foot on top so fast and the, the contours are so steep, I would definitely have this on my list to go check out. No doubt about it. And I'm sure one as obvious as this is gonna be a big time community hole. You know, a lot of these things, guys, are probably gonna be community type holes that a lot of people fish because they're obvious, but the reason they're community holes is because they're obvious and they're structure that will hold fish. 
All right, so it looks like we're starting to get into a section of the lake where the deepest water is only 20 foot, even out in the creek channel. And, you know, that's going to be tough on, on some of this offshore structure. You can find some, but it's going to be tougher to find them zoomed out on Navionics. So what you have to do is find more subtle things. You have to get a little bit tighter, and then it becomes really time-consuming, like right here. Bam, see? I say it's time-consuming, but here we go. So I just found another hump, nine foot of water on top, 17, 18, creek channel running beside it, creek channel on both sides. Uh, I would definitely check this one out. It's not as big of a drop, but all the water around it is relatively more shallow, and so more subtle things will stand out. More subtle features will hold fish in that situation when it doesn't have as deep water around it. Another little hump right here. Boy, this lake is just full of them. So I've already got six, seven, eight spots that I can check. A uh, couple of different total, you know, total depth as far as the depth around it. So now I've got several spots that I can check offshore. These are all humps with small tops and sharp drops, which is what I'm looking for in the heat of summer, especially towards the end of the summer where we are now. Um, so I've got several spots to go look at. So now I'm going to switch gears and I've got to go uh, kind of restart and think about shallow water fishing, right? So if we want to look for shallow water, Google Earth comes into play and you're really going to use both in the shallow water scenario. So one of the first things that I found when I was looking for the shallow waters, I'm always looking for grass. Some type of vegetation is a big deal whenever you're talking shallow water, especially in the summertime. Now Cedar Creek's not known for vegetation, but as I was looking along, this is the third creek up on the east uh, bank, uh, two big creeks and then this smaller creek. And as we get to the back of this creek here, okay, the first thing I see is some flooded bushes. There is some flooded willow trees or buck brush or something in the very back of this creek, which is okay. Lots of docks like everywhere on Cedar Creek. Whoops. Lots of docks like everywhere on Cedar Creek. But one of the interesting things that I saw was two things. One is, if you, if you look right here, looks like some lily pads or some type of flooded vegetation. And as we zoom in on it and scroll over, there's even some right here down this bank. Uh, and these come way out into the middle here. And then as I go over here, it looks like the whole creek is full of something. I don't know what this is exactly. I don't know if that's uh, something reflecting weird on the, on the satellite imagery. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's got my curiosity up, so I'm gonna check it out. Um, now, what I want to do is when I find something that looks interesting, some type of vegetation, okay, so these might be pads, little dollar pads or something like that. So I'm going to go over here to the Navionics app, and we're going to zoom in on the same creek, which is right here. We're going to get back here, and I want to know what the depth is. Because I always want to have at least like five, preferably five or six foot or deeper around the vegetation. Four foot is an absolute minimum. Okay, as we look in here, you got a creek bend coming in here, so nine foot all the way against these docks. And where we saw these pads, there's six foot uh, creek channels running right off the edge of those pads that come way out. Hey, that looks really good. There's even a road bed out here in the mouth running across Old Submerged Bridge right here. I'm liking the back of this cove, this creek, which I believe is called Lynn Creek. Um, and then one other thing that I noticed on here that I want to show you guys. If you look as this creek feeds in here, guys, as this creek goes back in, there's docks here. Docks all the way back to here. That tells me that I should be able to get my boat into the mouth of this creek and go up this creek. Now, as you start getting up into this creek where I'm headed out right now, you see all these overhanging trees? There it is, Lynn Creek. There's even a bridge back here. Uh, I think you could, could, should be able to get your boat back in there. And in this situation, obviously we've got a bridge. That's a huge shade feature. All these trees are going to create a lot of shade. There's probably a bunch of laydowns in this area. Uh, this is actually kind of a really good, somewhat little known technique in the summertime is if you can get into the creek itself where you've got a bass boat and nothing but a creek, uh, they can fish really good because the water temps will stay cooler in there. Number one, you got running water every time it does rain. 
Uh, number two, you've got shade constantly. It's always shaded, so the water temps are going to stay cooler. It looks like you might even could go, if you can get past this bridge, you can go all the way back in here. So there's some exploring that needs to be done for me right here in Lynn Creek. I really like the looks of that creek, guys, with all these docks leading into it that tells me. Now, let's go look and see if there's some depth. Obviously, here we go, six, five, uh, six to five foot of depth all the way back into here. Hey, <laughs> that just gets me even more excited. I'm really thinking we can get back to this bridge, and I'm really excited about that bridge may hold a lot of fish as that creek kind of pinches down, as you see right there. Right, that creek will pinch down, even splits in two. And then the creek kind of condenses down to a narrow spot. Looks like there's a good bend here where there's going to be some good depth. Um, I like that bridge area. I'm really liking the looks of this creek right here as far as getting way back in it. I like these pads out here with the creek channel off the edge. I like this roadbed with the old submerged bridge right here. There's a lot to fish in the back of Lynn Creek that I would have high hopes is going to hold some fish. And anytime you got that type of area that's got all those dynamic features like that, if it's holding a big population of fish, guys, there is a darn good, a darn good chance that these docks, all these docks in here, a lot of them are going to hold fish. Uh, that thing is full of docks, as we can see here on Google Earth. And, and a lot of these docks are going to be likely to hold fish with all these features that are back here in the back of Lynn Creek. Now, that being said, what I would now do is I would spend the rest of my time here trying to duplicate uh, creeks like that so I would continue to look at the back of every single creek on here Looking for those inlets where I could get possibly get my boat back into a creek the shaded trees see how far back in there that creek goes um, I would look For more creeks like that because I really have high hopes that that's going to be a good spot um, for Obviously we have a lot of offshore structure to check too. So this would be a very quick busy practice day Cedar Creek has a lot of good features to fish. I know it's a good lake. Now I see why. I might have to take my boat over there because I'm liking a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing uh, as, I, as I start studying this, this map here. But that's the big thing, guys. Get yourself several different types of structure uh, using your seasonal pattern knowledge. You know the offshore structure. They want to be on smaller uh, flat spots on top with steeper drops. Uh, that's a big deal. If you're going to fish shallow, it helps to have vegetation. you got to have a little bit of depth in the back of those creeks. And going back into those little old feeder creeks, that can be sneaky, sneaky good right there. We appreciate you guys watching today. Hope this helps. Hope you enjoyed it as much as you did the last one. And we'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fork Guys.